Good day everyone, how are you all doing? This is Yixit at Magnet Crypto back again with another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at some news, a couple of up updates, and just have a look at the market in general. But particularly, I want to have a look at some BTC pairings instead of the usual USD USD pairings for a very important reason. So without further ado, let's run the intro and get straight into it. As usual, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel and like this video, smash that like button, I would very much appreciate that. And I've got a crypto course completely free, link for that is in the description, packed with TA and, and fundamentals. Also I've got a private telegram group that I run, if you want to join that, go ahead and click the link in the description. With that out of the, out of the way, let's get straight into the market. Firstly, let's have a look at some news actually. Um, Crypto Potato, one of my favorite sites. You know, you're seeing a lot more bullish articles uh, as per usual or as expected, sorry, should I say. You know, a little joke, Mark Cuban saying that he would run for president if Bitcoin hits 1 million. It's not out of the question, both cases. Um, but particularly, there's two um, articles that, you know, kind of stood out to me. And that is one regarding uh, Ripple CEO, and we'll look at his tweets in a second. But also, so this particular this article in particular stood out to me, and that is regarding backed potentially, um, you know, going public, doing an IPO, and obviously this has come very, you know, soon after Coinbase saying that they're going to go public. And it's funny, there was actually a tweet where, or an interview where Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, said that, uh, well, he predicted 2020, they're going to start seeing crypto companies going public. He did go back on a statement saying, obviously, that didn't happen. But once it starts, there will be a trend of crypto companies going public. And we'll start to see that trend happening now. Coinbase, um, now potentially backed. Ripple even in the future or in last year said they would go public eventually as well. So back the Bitcoin futures platform uh, owned and operated by the ICE is reportedly going public after a merger with a Chicago based blank check company VPC Impact Acquisition Holdings. So should both parties indeed proceed with the deal, the sources estimate that the combined entity could have a value of over $2 billion. Furthermore, the potential deal could be just around the corner as the report suggested it might take place next week. Uh, back potentials, uh, uh, Back's potential IPO comes just after a few weeks after another cryptocurrency related company announced similar plans. The largest US based exchange Coinbase filed a form S1 in December with the SEC and its valuation is expected to be nearly $30 billion. So there's obviously a, a lot of value within this market and this trend of company crypto companies going public is accelerating and as Brad Garling has kind of predicted this will happen more and more as time goes forward um, so that was very interesting secondly talking about Coinbase the age-old problem and you know me and my mates joke about this is you know every time crypto goes on a crazy surge in in, in valuation price going through the moon this age-old problem keeps coming up you know people can't trade people's accounts freeze surely after so long they would have fixed this issue maybe I'm starting to believe that this is on purpose because how can it be that every time price goes through the roof now I understand obviously a lot of activity happens during these times so that could be a reason but surely they would have increased capacity to be able to handle you know the kind of surge at its highest numbers but you know what he's what this person said i thought my account had been hacked more coinbase customers see funds frozen for weeks as they miss the bitcoin boom some customers of the crypto exchange unable to touch their money after buying bitcoin they were told to re-upload identity documents afterwards they were told their accounts were under review um coinbase said a surging user and regulatory requirements were behind unacceptable customer service unacceptable customer service wait times how long have they been open for how can this still be happening this is insane these excuses are unacceptable 
and the waiting time is unacceptable. It's like, when are they gonna, they, they need to be doubling and tripling whatever, you know, capacity they have. Um, of course, do we, do we expect Bitcoin to hit 40,000 so quickly? No, but they should, they have, they know how many customers they have and they can predict how many customers will, you know, will onboard after the surges. So there's, there's not really an excuse for this, but it keeps happening. And so, you know, that's why I do say, you know, you should take profits incrementally and especially during the, you know, this peak and the next rally, you know, the also the ultimate rally um, later on this year. Don't wait until, you know, Bitcoin and the crypto market, you know, hits its highest level. Start to take more aggressive profits. And that's what I'm good. That's my plan anyway, to take uh, profits more aggressively a little bit early rather than waiting until you know the, the crescendo when this this kind of thing will start happening you know exchanges will start to freeze and you'll you won't be able to take your money out and you'll end up you know being in a in a situation where maybe your account like like this person your account gets frozen they start to ask for identity documents and then obviously because it's so hectic you're not going to get it through so it could take a week or two weeks, who knows? And by that time, the whole market has, has gone, you know, up and down, you would have lost a lot of value. So profits potentially could be lost in that scenario. So I like to, you know, make sure that I'm a bit early. Obviously it's hard to predict, you know, you never know when the top is or even when we're close to the top. But me personally, I will start to take profits more aggressively as we start to get to more euphoric levels or closer to that level. So you got to take it day by day, but that's my plan anyway. I wanna I wanna avoid things like this, you know, getting stuck in in the in the ether. Um, moving on. Brad Garlinghouse uh, fired a load of tweets. Obviously, Ripple has got sued, and there's a lot of uncertainty going on around Ripple, and we'll get to XRP's price action in a second but people are worried people are th having all kinds of questions what is happening with ripple why aren't they doing this why aren't are they not doing that so he's replied um with some important to some important questions and let's have a little look through them so obviously he's not going to go through the litigation um you know that's private behind closed doors they're going to be talking about that but why didn't ripple settle with the sec and they said they did try and they'll continue to try with the new administration to resolve this in a way so the XRP community can continue innovating. And obviously this uncertainty is really causing them issues. You're gonna have customers, their, their customers, their real customers, be very worried as to Ripple's future. So it's in their best interest, Ripple's best interest to resolve this as quickly as possible. So, it's good that he answered that question. Um, did you pay exchanges to, to list XRP? When will it be relisted? Uh, XRP is one of the most liquid digital assets globally. 95% of the of, of it is traded outside the US. Ripple has no control over where XRP is listed, who owns it, etc. And it's open source and decentralized. When are you responding to the SEC? This, I mean, I don't want people asking this question. The legal process is slow. Things may seem quiet, but there's plenty happening behind the scenes uh, and they'll be responding within weeks. Um, do investors have faith in Ripple? Yes, they, ha they have real investors. This is how you own Ripple equity. I think that's a slight shot towards the SEC. Buying our stock, not buying XRP. We're disappointed that Tetragon, who owns 1.5%, is seeking to unfairly advantage itself through the SEC's allegations. This is a silly question. Did you pay customers to use XRP? Um, well, I was thinking of uh, investors, but yes, they provided in they provide um, some customers, especially first movers, with incentive to use ODL. This is building a payments network, and everyone does it. Um, we built a product that's first of its kind, integrated new info comes with cost ODL XRP. Real XRP with XRP solves real problem with cost speed and settlement, and that's proves to be the tune of billions of dollars, and that's what he has, that he has for us today. 
Uh, no one's going to be silent. No one will we give up this fight. We're on the right side of the facts in history and look forward to a day in court as well as engaging with the new SEC leadership. So it's really great to see him come out clarifying all these points. A lot of people have a lot of questions. So it's good to just say something instead of being quiet. And he addressed it very nicely. Obviously, there's many more questions that people are going to ask that were not answered. But, you know, he did his best. I, as I said, I do think, you know, Ripple will win. It's a win-win situation. Either they're going to get fined and they get the clarity or they'll win and get the clarity. Um, as I said before, when I sold, you know, most of my XRP, I just wasn't willing to wait um, to, in case XRP capitulates even more. So I did sell majority, but I did buy a little bit back. Um, we'll talk about uh, Bitcoin in a second. I did buy a little bit back at about 24, 25 cents because it was looking like it was turning around that wave two, as Alessio Rastani mentioned, it was looking quite good, especially on the four hour. I didn't mention in my private Telegram group, actually. Let me pull up the, the let me pull up the message. So, yes, yeah, so I put this in the private Telegram group. Um, if I said if XRP starts to reverse, I'm on it. Uh, clear ascending triangle and it wicked out already. Just averaged in a buy. If it's, a wave, if it's in a wave three, and it wave three, we could very well exceed 70 cents very shortly. That's what I said. And what happened afterwards? Bang, bang, 50% gain. I definitely was not expecting uh, a move like that. It was still, for me, 50 50, could very well easily have gone down, um, but it was looking like an ascending triangle. Uh, and I decided to average in a buy, and it did quite well. Also, if you haven't you know, join the Telegram group, join that, you know, I'm doing, I'm putting a lot of value in there. So let's have a little look at XRP. Um, so XRP is looking pretty good. You know, it's looking pretty good, especially on the four hourly, it's turning around and it's looking like the wave three is confirming. It's turning around very nicely uh, from that bottom. And so you know, it's got a good chance of potentially going way, way higher than before. Um, as mentioned in Alessi Arastani's video, you can easily go to, you know, $1, $1.90. So let's keep a close eye on XRP. Although all this nonsense is happening, you know, with SEC, you know, price seems to not be affected or price seems to be turning around regardless should i say all right let's move on to bitcoin oh my goodness what i mean this is insane this is absolutely insane it's you know i get like i mentioned this on my personal instagram and i get i almost get bored of saying xrp is at 35 xrp is at 40 it's just making crazy highs i think people must be getting bored like they see X up here at 20,000 and now it's at 40. They must be thinking, what what the hell is happening? Um, but it's at 41,000. Jesus. Insane. Insane. But obviously we're happy. Um, but the correction, the correction, oh, the correction. When it happens, it's going to be crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, but long term, my thinking is if it gets to, if it's at this level, 41,000 now, Obviously, it will correct at one point, but when the next rally starts, surely we're going to go to 100, 100k and more. For me, this is starting to really confirm my belief that it will go to 100k. 50k is literally only around the corner now, so it's probably going to smash that and get to 100k at least. Um, so that's good to know. But let's talk about some BTC pairings. Now, it's very important to look at BTC pairings. They often get ignored, but there's a lot of volume that goes through BTC pairings. A lot of altcoins, especially the smaller ones, operate with BTC pairings rather than USD, USDT. So when uh, a, a BTC pairing, so like, you know, ETH BTC or XRB BTC goes on an uptrend, that is a good sign that a lot of value is going towards that pairing that, you know, XRP or ETH or whatever it is, 
So when you start to see them turning around BT on the BTC pairing, this is a good sign. But as we'll, we'll see when we get into the pairings, obviously Bitcoin is smashing it right now. So no one is really going to sell their BTC and convert it to other alts. Not really. So that's what we're going to see. So let's have a look firstly at ETH BTC, which we have down here. So ETH is, is doing quite well on the BTC pairing. Um, obviously we had that uptrend in this area correction and now we're starting to turn around with ETH absolutely smashing it. People are starting to convert their BTC for Ethereum. So this is a good sign. Um, we have some resistance in this area and also this major resistance uh, at this area. Once we get past this though, um, I think that would mean that BTC has run out of steam and people are starting to look at, you know, Ethereum and the altcoins. So there's major resistance at this point. We may get turned around, uh, we may get smashed down. It may be BTC goes down and the rest of the market gets, you know, gets destroyed as well. When that, when that correction happens, it may put a downer on the rest of the market. So that's, there's a resistance at this level. But once we get past this, um, it really, really will be altcoin season. Let's look at XRP BTC. So have a look at Bitstamp. So XRP BTC, XRP was going into oblivion, oblivion on the XRP pa uh, BTC pairing. Uh, as you can see here, this is during the cap capitulation. There was only some resistance. This was the last bastion of resistance or support, sorry, at this level. And that's where it started to turn around. If you had if you had watched this pairing before the capitulation, you might have anticipated uh, support at this level. Um, but, you know, once we turn around, there isn't a lot of resistance past this level. Obviously, we have this level over here, but between these two levels, there isn't much going on. So. It could be a quick, quick ride back up to this level and beyond. So do bear that in mind. Let's have a look at some altcoins. Dot BTC. So dot, as you can see, absolutely in a bear market from September all the way down to um, December in the last few weeks. Since then, we had that massive, massive surge. Price on the USD pairing went to above $10. Since then, it's it's smashed back down below this very important support level around here. Um, so we need to turn around this. Hopefully we can turn around and create a higher low on this pairing. That's what I'll be looking for on the daily. Again, it doesn't look too good on the daily, but it seems we have formed a bottom here. What we need to do now is to just create a higher low and continue on and then get past this level over here. So that's what I'll be looking for on, on, on dot PTC pairing. Carver. So you can see here, it definitely does not look very good. It, on the BTC pairing, a lot of these uh, altcoins ha are still in a bear market. So it hasn't really bottomed yet on the weekly over here. And one thing to bear in mind is that once it does go on an uptrend on this pairing, most of these altcoins will absolutely fly. So you can see it hasn't quite bottomed just yet. We need to see some, see some green candles. So there isn't uh, an alt season on these pairings just yet. On the daily, it does look like we're turning around. We've created a bottom and now we're testing that bottom again. We need to obviously see a turnaround because uh, this is the lowest point we've ever been. We need to see a turnaround and then to get past this level uh, to complete that double bottom. That's what we need to see. So hopefully in the next few days, slash a week, we'll start to see that. Uh, let's have a look at, uh, let's have a look at ADA. So Cardano, you can see the difference here. Obviously we've bottomed here uh, and since then went on a massive, massive rally since then. But the only thing is two uh, lower lows were created here. Hopefully it can maintain this trend line. Uh, it has obviously rallied quite well. So what we need to see here is to either stay above this um, support level or resistance turned support and to continue on creating higher lows. 
the next major level to get past is this level over here. But Cardano, at the moment, you can see lower highs and lower lows, but there's a trend line. So it's not quite uh, in the uptrend just yet. It's just, it's just spiked quite, quite highly from this level. So we still need to turn around properly and start to create some higher lows and higher highs. <clears throat> Let's have a look at XLM. So XLM wasn't looking too good, similar to Cardano. Uh, it was creating lower lows and, create, and below this very, very important support level. Now it's surged massively to the upside, tapping the next resistance level. But what we need to see now is at least a retest of the support level and to continue on going higher. Let's have a look at VeChain. I'm going a bit quick because this video is is entering 22 minutes. Uh, v chain uh, is now in this range, this this support level and this um, uh, resistance level. So that's good that it's in in this range. But again, similar to the other cryptos, it's created lower lows and lower highs. It needs to start turning around to create higher lows, get past this resistance level, and turn it into support. We extend this further, you know. This is a clear resistance, but it needs to get above this and then continue on going higher. So that's the next move, but at least it's within the range and it isn't looking like it's going to go any lower. Actually, you can spot a potential trend line over here. So that's looking all right. There's a clear trend line here from back in 2019. So this is a long term trend line. So that this is a good sign. But again, we need to close above this resistance level and turn it into support. And let's finish off with Link. Let's see what Link is saying on the Bitcoin pairing. So Link wasn't looking too good. It was not, it's not looking, I think it was looking similar to Carva. So you can see here, massive, massive sell off. Um, you know, people were selling the Link for Bitcoin. Uh, so this was not looking too good. It found support in this very, very crucial resistance turned support. If it went below this, it, it would not have been good for, for Link. But clearly it's found support here on the weekly, um, but we still need to see proper turnaround and, and a green candle. On the daily though, you can see it is starting to turn around. We're starting to see uh, a bottoming formation uh, and potentially a, a head and shoulders. If it, if it, is able to you can see here it's like a left shoulder head the neckline if it if it turns around and re taps that neckline I think that looks like a head and shoulder to me so this is potential reversal going on um, on the USD pairing obviously we're seeing some good price action for link but we need to see a reversal on that Bitcoin pairing as well so link is in the midst of a reversal for Bitcoin. Um, so we'll finish the video here, a bit of a long one, but what I want to close with is the fact that Bitcoin pairings are important as well. A lot of volume goes through Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the gateway drug and then it goes to all the other altcoins, especially the smaller ones. So if you have a bull run on the Bitcoin pairings, this is very good because of that lot of value is going towards the altcoins. And you can clearly see that in a lot of the altcoins, we don't have, we don't even have an uptrend just yet. We're still in the process of reversing. A lot of them are still in the red, especially in the weekly. So we'll close off this video here. Hope you got some value from that and see you in the next video. Peace.